They gave them to poor families who had come from the countryside to live in uh, Caracas, had nowhere to live. Um, one of the men, one of the young men, described how he used to live in a ranchos in the in the hills around um, Caracas, um, next to a sewage drain. It stunk all the time. Now he was going to university and a public education. They also had a garden in the front there in which they were um, making um, a food, a communal garden in front of that huge building. There were six of those buildings housing a thousand families. Yeah, the next one. Um, uh, this is, they'd set up little workshops in, the, in this building and that was a bakery they had started. Um, that was, they were making bread to supply the whole of the six buildings. Uh, mm. Next one. Uh, that's one of the ones you saw in the film. That's where they had designed these nappies so that you could, <laughs> they were re washable, reusable, and for all sizes. Um, and they'd also designed some clothes and they were teaching people how to cut out clothes and make fashions. That's in that building. The next one. Um, that was a laundromat that the Maduro had opened um, with about six huge um, dryers and washing machines that anyone um, could, could use. They offered to, um, we could go and wash our clothes there when we finished the brigade. <laughs> the next one. Uh, that's, uh, we went and saw that when you went on the, um, uh, the Teleferico, we landed at San Agustin, and that's where, where they were doing um, murals. There's, the whole of Caracas now is covered with beautiful murals, um, mainly all concerning some aspect of um, Chavez, but also all sorts of other types of um, paintings and buildings. It's, it's very beautiful. Now, that were the, just a couple of letters of his, um, the, um, his name, of course, the next one. And that's when the, we, were, we were supposed to participate, but I just had a little snooze on the footpath there. <laughs> <laughs> they were um, painting all of those, yeah. The next one. Uh, now, that's when that's in Kanaima. That's the call of the Kanaima project. That's where you, you also saw them in the video. That's where they were making, um, I think they distributed over six million um, computers with six different um, types. They're assembling them in this factory. They are making them from um, parts from China. But of course, it's a free operating system. I forget what that's called, that operating Linux? system. Linux. Unix? Linux, yeah. Linux. Yeah, Linux. Um, they're not using any other, and nothing from Microsoft. And that's mm -hmm. all through the government departments as well. Um, but they were all, these, these computers are just, you can imagine, handed out to virtually every single child in um, Venezuela would get these computers. And they could take them home, they owned them, they looked after them, you know, their grandmothers could use them as well and they could teach their grandmothers. And they're also yeah. using them to sort of develop their own operating system. So it was really encouraging an enormous amount of creativity amongst the kids. And the kids would share them, the programs with each other and, um, and teach each other how to use them. And the next one. Um, this is when we went to, we left Caracas and went to Balavento, on the, it's a coastal area. And this is a centre of Afro-descendants. Uh, that was a high school um, we visited, just, just briefly had a look at it. Um, there was a lot of National Guards um, around. That was the, mainly, the only place where we saw a lot of National Guards um, with weapons and guns. And uh, apparently a National Guard soldier had gone missing a month ago. And we went to the next suburb in Rio Chico and they had found the body that day. The National Guardsman had, who had been murdered by the opposition. That's, and the next one. Uh, this is a gas distribution centre in Balavento. Uh, they had uh, that's run by the state government. They had in, introduced these new red plastic um, containers because in Balavento, it's even on the coast, so they got destroyed. The metal aluminium metal got destroyed by salt. So they had in, um, invented these plastic ones that were much safer and distributing gas all over that whole area uh, at very, very cheap prices for, um, for people to, because that's what they used to cook all the time. Uh, the next one. Um, this is a chocolate factory. Um, I think we saw some of that also in the previous one. They were making an enormous amounts of chocolate from cacao. This was a state-run factory. Uh, they worked in conjunction with the um, uh, independent sort of local producers as well. Um, yeah, so they, they, I think they only worked for three or four days and then the next two days they clean up. But um, they gave us a lovely cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> 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 the next one. Your favourite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the banana factory. Um, 
that was very impressive because they managed to sort of replace bits and pieces of equipment that they used to import from the United States at a massive expense, like the lids for the... Um, they were making a jam out of bananas and they were making a feed out of um, bananas for animal feed, which was very important. Mm -hmm. They were also making the, the, potato, the banana chips, which everybody eats. And um, they replaced the sort of the plastic bag that you put the chips in because of a local um, produce because it was so expensive. And they told us about um, a cord that they lost a, 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 an electric cord that ran one of the machines that pumped the chips into the bags. And it was going to cost something like four or five billion bolivars, million bolivars, sorry, from the United States. So one of the electricians managed to get a cord from um, China, which was about two or three hundred <laughs> bolivars, mm -hmm. and remade it and, you know, put it together in the machine work. So you've got to sort of, it's created an enormous amount of creativity and it, um, innovation to, to get these things running. Uh, and the guy who ran that was an ex-army uh, colonel. So, I mean, he was committed to getting this thing going up and running and they were producing all sorts of different products that they'd never produced before. And they described how in the next sort of um, uh, near there, they were building a factory that was going to be three times bigger than the one they had that would supply the whole of Caribbean as well. Uh, the next one. And so this is in um, Rio Chico, and this is still part of this is part of the Sistema. You probably heard of Sistema, the um, youth orchestra that's um, funded um, by the government. And these were a the whole group of um, school children who played us, gave us a little concert. They're now it's also trying to introduce that scheme into the prisons to give them uh, instruments so that um, the prisoners will be um, also you know, come out of that, that whole criminology aspect and learn a different way of life. So yeah, that was really nice. Uh, next one. Oh, they showed us, yeah, what you also saw before previously, um, the drumming and singing of the African cultures. They described three or four um, tribes were mainly brought from, um, from Africa to there. It's something like, I think something like maybe um, 16 million, maybe more than that, slaves were brought through Africa to Venezuela. We also went, I didn't describe before, but we went to an African, the, the Chavez created this centre, Institute for African Descendants to study the history. And they've worked out from the genetic studies that probably 70% of, of Venezuelan people have African genes and are descended from Africans. 70%. It's quite really, really high. I was really amazed. And they've gone through, they've got this whole library and institute and research centre where they are uh, looking at the, um, the whole history of slavery and what happened to, to them. And so, and so in Balavento, where's the centre of this culture, they've maintained the drumming and the singing. So we were, we were able to listen to another concert. That was really lovely. Um, oh yeah, we had a nice day on the beach <laughs> from our hard labours. <laughs> It's a, there's beautiful beaches all around Balavendo, a huge coastal area. We also pass in the boat these huge mansions, you know, homes in which people obviously, you know, extremely wealthy lived in these beautiful houses that were all sort of locked up because only there about three or four weeks. Apparently a whole lot of Americans also live there. They fly there and, and stay for about two or three weeks of the year. These huge homes on the coast. Uh, the next one. Uh, this is really, really interesting. We went to um, Lara um, from Balaventa, right across to the, uh, the other state on the west of Caracas. And this was the uh, Brahma factory that was originally um, owned by Brazilian company Brahma. But it's a huge part of a massive um, transnational corporations that they made beer. For the, and, and export it into the whole of Venezuela and, and, and all, of, all over Latin America and all over Europe. Now, in 2013, I don't know whether I've written about this in the paper, you might have read about it, <laughs> maybe the next article. 2013, the company decided that after Chavez had died, that there was going to be um, the, a, a military takeover and they were going to get out. They didn't want anything to do with it. So they um, were going to sell the whole factory. So but what they did was they sacked everybody. People had been there for 24 years. In fact, one guy had been there for 24 years. They used to have eight or 900 people working there. It had been slowly reduced. It was a huge site, like massive. And, um, and so these 
100 workers occupied the factory for two years because there was a law introduced under Chavez that you couldn't be a, a workforce couldn't be sacked unless there was good reason for it. You couldn't just get eliminate them. And also, yes. Yeah, so um, and that was really weird because all the equipment was kept in place and all the uh, materials were still there. There was something like 500 tons of barley in those huge silos. It's a massive, massive silo. I think it's over 100 acres with about two kilometres long. You know, they had five. They, they, in this site, they had five wells of water, pure, pure water they were sitting on, um, which they just used for beer. And, 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 and Lara is a very dry state, so they had incredible um, um, uh, um, resources there. Anyway, they occupied it for two years. The police from that state in Lara, because the governor is the opposition, there's only three opposition governors in um, Venezuela, they attacked the workers weekly to try and drive them out but they stayed solid and eventually with the help of the commune a local commune there who was also working um, in fruit and vegetables they got together and managed to get a law protecting them the workers so they could legally start to operate they didn't want to make beer I mean Chavez was against <laughs> didn't support that idea but they used the barley because it wasn't any longer um, possible to eat it for human consumption they used it to make feed so they were now making animal feed for all the pigs cattle goats sheep in the whole area um, so that was uh, they talked they, they took us around that factory for uh, quite a while it was a really really interesting talk that they managed to do all that um, in, in you know since Chavez had died they fought to keep this factory and their and their jobs going so it was now a communally owned uh, factory and all the profits went back to the whole community. And the next one, Roger. And this um, shot, I took this one because in 2015, before the actual Grimbers um, started in, well, well, this year and the year before, because they had then got legal protection to run the factory um, and produce goods, the Grimbers started. And so a whole mob of opposition uh, supporters Raid it, broke into the factory and at the back they tried, they, there was a whole lot of um, wooden crates and plastic rubbish and they started a fire, a massive fire. It was huge and they were, the whole idea was to burn down the entire factory because it was by the opposition grimbers. But the, um, the locals realised what was going on and got hold of some fire trucks and managed to put it out before it got into the factory. So that's part, sort of part of the attack today. Uh, next one. Um, oh, I love this photo because oh, <laughs> that was in 2012, the October presidential election, and that's a picture of Chavez. It's a famous picture of when he spoke in this torrential downpour for the election, <laughs> and he wouldn't take an umbrella because we were all standing out of the rain, and uh, it was on one of the walls in the in the Brown factory. Oh, but they were very politicised, very. Um, very, very conscious workforce, you know, who'd obviously had contact with the Communist Party, I think, and with, had been struggled for a long time. The one thing I meant to say also about this factory was that um, thanks to WikiLeaks, the workers found out why all the material was left there, why all the machinery was left there, was because they were going to sell it to, Brahma was going to sell it to Cisneros, who already r runs the massive um, beer polar production, beer. yeah, polar in Venezuela. So he would have had a monopoly over beer, and which is illegal also under New Savas laws. So it was under <coughs> WikiLeaks and um, that they found that out, and then they and then they understood what was what was going to happen, what they were going to do to them. Uh, the next one, H. okay. Then we we stayed that night at um, El, at um, uh, it's it's this is a. This is a latifundia, or a, a huge farm, ran by the um, MST, the Movement of um, San, Santieros, the um, Brazilian... Flavis. The group, the um, Brazilian um, peasants. And that land was given to them by Chavez 11 years ago. It was totally degraded. Um, we lived in um, horse stables that had been renovated, but you can imagine what this latifundia was like. It was just for entertainment. There was a huge barbecue area swimming pools. The land was totally degraded. Was that it one owner previously? When it was the land of Yeah. Yes. Anyway, um, so they had these Brazilians who had a lot of experience growing food. They had recuperated a native 
corn, called Galeno brand, I think, that because they wanted to avoid having to buy GM food, GM genetically modified um, crops from America, which are really, really expensive. And they were really worried because there was a massive rainfall. Even though in this area in Lara it's pretty dry, there was a massive rainfall and they, this whole area got flooded. They thought they'd lost this one crop of corn. Um, but they were really surprised when the rain stopped and they, even though it had all been flooded, it, it survived because it was much tougher. You know, it wasn't a, a very specialised mm -hmm. group. So they were really pleased about that. Um, they, were, they were doing a lot of work renovating that, that land. Uh, the next one. Uh, and that, that was, a, that's a Brazilian, I mean that's a Venezuelan woman but working with the Brazilian people um, with this, uh, re renovating the, this huge land and growing food. I think they'd grown about 12,000 tonnes of corn. Um, now this is a women's group we went to in a very, very poor area. Um, they were, in this part, uh, still in Barquisimeto, there was um, like really ra ranchos made out of tin shed, tin, bits of tin stuck together. Um, and they were fighting um, domestic violence. They were concentrating on the issues around women. There was a massive problem in Lara with pregnancies, with um, um, deaths for, of women from, um, from birth, def birth um, deaths, trauma. Um, birth trauma. Um, three times the national rate of, um, of, of Venezuela. And so they, were, they had uh, this woman, Katrina, who made the film, she's sitting there, they had formed a group that had been working there for a long time with women and had confronted the doctors in the hospital who were rotting the system and selling the uh, medical kits they'd get from the government um, in a black market around Lava. Obviously helped by the, um, the governor and the mayor at the pre that present time who were of, of the opposition. Uh, the next one. Um, that's also, the, that's a little um, building they had to work out of. And they're also making sauces, tomato sauces and things. The next one. Um, oh, that was the El Maizal. Uh, that was a, a huge community of um, a thousand hectares, I think, that were growing coffee, corn. Um, I had a hundred cattle, head of cattle they were milking every day, 5 a.m., <laughs> 7 a.m. <laughs> the schedule seemed horrendous. Making cheese, lots of cheese. And they were selling that all in the local community. They had taken over the land. Um, it was organised by Chavez because the owner um, wasn't growing anything there, doing anything there at all. He lived in Miami. Um, he used to fly in every six months in a helicopter. The workers were virtually slaves. Um, and um, they, uh, Chavez bought it off him, but and he, oh, he wanted to negotiate with the owner. He said, but you've got to come to the property. And the, and the owner just didn't turn up. He didn't really care. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, they. He, he, he just wanted his land back, but anyway, it was taken over. It was a very easy operation <laughs> compared to many, and they were producing an enormous amount of food and um, organising a huge, uh, about 80,000 families, I think, or 80,000 people, about um, six or 8,000 families in that area, between Lara and Portuguesa, the two states. The next one? And that's the crew, that's the crew we were with. <laughs> Um, and that's the Saman tree, they'd put a memorial there because Chavez came two or three times to that um, big um, uh, farm and he, um, that was, a, and the Saman tree is sort of quite sacred in, it was all sort of got a sacred connotation in Venezuela because that's, a Saman tree is huge, it's a massive tree, huge um, shade and that's when, um, that was one of the trees in, when Sa uh, Chavez first set up the Movement of Venezuela and MBR, uh, the fifth, Movement of the Fifth Republic. Um, that's where he made the swore to each other, the first four of the um, of those with, organized within the army to change Venezuela. Uh, the next one. And that's part of the land that was visible. In the mountains they were growing uh, coffee, but it's a very beautiful area that they'd taken over. The next one. Um, um, that was one of the women organizers who organizes the gas distribution in part of El Mar Marcel as well. That was just down the road from the um, where the cattle were and the farm was. Next one. Um, and that's a nursery that also set up. It had been set up by the Cubans, but that had sort of fallen into disarray and they were now sort of recuperating it um, with a group of workers from there. And, and they're going to hold classes with the university there to train up about 300 um, students. Next one. Uh, that's the radio station uh, we went to. That was where Ali Primero 
used to go and sing and hang out. Um, it's a beautiful old house in Buckers. It's one of the oldest houses that pre preserved it. There's a beautiful old uh, furniture and sculpture all around there. I think that's, is that the end?